Welcome to NCC Unplugged, the podcast from Norman Christian Church, where conversations, community, and culture converge. Welcome to another episode of NCC Unplugged. We're really excited that you joined us for another staff round table. So we have the NCC staff around here, and we'll go around the table just talking about things that are on our plate here at NCC and also maybe some things at home. Jonathan, you had some big news last time we did our mm-hmm. roundtable episode. You had purchased a house, right? Uh, your wife had not seen it ahead of time. I'm guessing she she's hadn't. now seen it. She has, yes. Because you live there. We do live there. So that's exciting. Yeah. What, but what, what, else, what else is new with you this month? So we had resolved to get a dog pretty much as soon as we moved in. And it wasn't as soon as we moved in, but we've been there for not even a month. And just this past Saturday, we got a dog. So that's super exciting. What what kind of dog? A shepherd mix. A mix of what? I don't know. But it's just a big dog, big shepherd mix. When we got her, they were like, you know, she has anxiety from being in the kennel. So she's on gabapetin. So we named her Gabby after the gabapetin. And I like that. I don't know. I think it's funny. Cool. So she's great. She is trained and... When I like hit my chest, she jumps up and gives me a hug, and it's great. Yeah. Very cool. So. I mean, you guys are definitely animal people. For sure. So you have a dog and a cat now? We do. We have a tub in the basement that is like for bathing the dog, and she needed it as soon as we got home. Natalie gave her a bath. I was not a part of it. <laughs> so any other pets on the horizon? Mm, she would probably like to think so, but no. <laughs> no? This is it? You're... For now. Isn't yeah. Natalie a big fan of mice? Like she wants a pet mouse? She is. She's She wants just about any kind of pet. And it's funny because she'll like push for them as if I don't want a dog. Like she's like, well, what about a rat? I'm like, I don't want a rat. <laughs> like that's not a pet. And I agree. The, yeah. The one time she was like, you know, just imagine you came home and I was cooking dinner. I had like a snake around my neck. Like, would you be okay with that? <laughs> no, I would not be okay with that. She's like, you wouldn't like give me a hug? No, I wouldn't come near you if you had a snake around your neck. So, but now we have the dog, so that'll yeah. hopefully curb the desire for other yeah, animals. As, as the one that was in charge of your premarital counseling, I do feel like we talked about these things ahead of time, yes. right? Like she is prepared in this relationship to know there's going to be animal boundaries. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. Just making sure I did my job. Then. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, well, she, said we've ideas. been talking about it forever, so yeah. we will talk about it forever. <laughs> yep. Good, good. So this begs the question, how do the cat and the dog get along? They, I thought for sure the cat would hate the dog. Like I thought she was, cause she's like the queen of the house. The cat is, she goes wherever she wants. She runs all everywhere and stands on top of things. And, but when we, when we brought the dog, it's weird. Cause like the dog just doesn't understand the cat. Like it, she walks by and the dog's just like, what is that? And she kind of watches it go by and, doesn't really pay much mind to it, but the cat is like very cautious mm. and she'll like go up and sniff and then she'll like back away and then she'll go up and like the one day yesterday, actually I was sick. So I was kind of like in bed in the morning and the dog was at the foot of the bed and the cat was up here with me, but the cat didn't know the dog was down there. So as soon as the dog moved, the cat just like bolted off my chest and, and ran away. So I think that there's friendship on the horizon, I mm. think that they'll settle their differences. But right now, the cat doesn't really want anything to do with the dog. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Well, we definitely started off this podcast with some great spiritual depth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Jonathan, going to church stuff now. Summer's coming up. What's yeah. on the horizon for you here at NCC and the youth group? For sure. Yeah, the first and one of the two biggest things is CIY. Um, so our week-long retreat with high school is called CIY, Christ in Youth. We're going to Ohio this year. So just kind of getting all the details of that, you know, reconfirming that we have the vans reserved that we reserved, you know, and getting registration taken care of, finalizing everything with Cedar Point because we're going to go to Cedar Point on the way back. Very cool. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of those details, you know, that it's like it didn't make sense to do them a couple months ago, but now it's like it feels like it's getting into crunch time with mm-hmm. with June coming up because that's the second week in June. And then the other big thing is the junior high camp. For middle school is will be in July. So yeah, that's at Camp Christian. Yes, right. Yeah. So you're the dean of that, which means mm-hmm. you're the guy in charge of all the activities, all the spiritual development curriculum, yes. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So this year, Natalie and I are actually both going to dean it, and cool. she's going to do all the recreational 
activities, and I'm going to be in charge of the spiritual development. We did that for the fall retreat last year, and it worked really well. Cool. I think it gave me like a little bit more room to breathe and actually enjoy the activities because I didn't have to worry about planning them the whole time. She was able to take responsibility for that, and she's great at that. She loves having fun. Yeah, so I look forward to that. I've got some volunteers lined up for both those things that are going to make the weeks just so much better. And yeah, nice. Really excited. Nice. Well, next to Jonathan is Allison Murray, our director of children's ministry. So, Allison, what is coming up? What is new in your world? Sure. So, this is kind of the busy season at church for me in children's ministry because we're gearing up for vacation Bible school. And so, that'll be in June and mid June. So just getting the right people in the right places and beginning registration and things like that. We really love VBS as a great outreach to our community so everyone can invite their friends and neighbors and just come and have a great week together learning about Jesus and having a lot of fun together. But before that, what I'm really excited about is this summer I am going to be welcoming an intern here at NCC. Her name is Faith Moore, and she happens to be one of Garrett's former students in his youth ministry in Kentucky. Well, look at so, that. Very yeah. cool. So I'm really excited to meet her. We've had several Zoom calls together and lots of texts. And so we're thankful several of our church members are going to be hosting her this summer in their mm-hmm. homes. So she'll have a place to stay the whole summer long. But she will be here from May 13th, 14th until August 1st. So I really encourage everyone If you have kids, get to know Faith this summer, maybe invite her over for dinner or take her, you know, on a hike or to the park or something like that, just to get to know her and engage and help her connect here this summer at NCC. We're going to steal her for CIY and camp as well. Gotcha. So So we have her reserved for those weeks. Yeah. 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 So Allison, this is your first time having an intern, so I'm sure that's exciting to have, I mean, for the busiest season, a helper that knows everything, knows what's going on confirming all the details in the in it with you during the whole summer. For sure. And then I'm also looking forward, in addition for from me being able to share with her things that I've learned over the years here, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to learning from her as well, because I'm sure she's going to have a lot of fresh ideas, you know, being in college right now and kind of hearing what's going on in children's ministry and things like that. So I think it'll be a great opportunity for both of us um, to learn from each other. And then in July, I am going to be the dean of the overnighter at Camp Christian, which is for first through third graders. It's just one night. It's two days. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's been a while since I have spent a lot of time with the younger kids. Jim and I have been deaning the winter retreat for fourth or sixth graders the last couple of years. And so I'm excited to be with the little ones and give them a really great first experience at camp. So this is the second mention of Camp Christian. If you've never been to Camp Christian, I don't know exactly what the website is. Just look up Camp Christian. It's camp-christian.org. I knew it was something different, camp-christian.org. Yep. It's in Min- Mill Run, Pennsylvania, but just a great opportunity for kids over the summer to be poured into by other adults that know Jesus and want these kids to know Jesus, but lots of activities and fun and just some really intentionality behind those programs. So go on their website. They have programs for all different kids. So you're on the younger spectrum for the kids this summer. Jonathan's right in the middle there with Mm -hmm. junior high. They have high school programs, elementary programs. So very cool. But no, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'm actually also leading a workshop for the young adult retreat, which is an age group that I don't spend much time with at all. So I am super excited Mm -hmm. about that. That's going to be the Saturday of um, Memorial Day weekend, so May 25th. And we're actually hosting a big portion of that day right here on site at NCC. So if you are a young adult and you are listening, you can definitely sign up for that. I think it'll be a really fun day. Very cool. So if you include the senior high, junior senior high fall retreat, I think we have all the ages covered. Nice. Between us. Yeah. It'll be great. We all get to hang out with everybody. So Allison, no new dog at home? No new dog. In the Murray home right now, the biggest thing is we are getting ready to go to Massachusetts next week. My kids are involved in an organization called NCFCA, which is a Christian speech and debate organization. And Lily has advanced to the regional championship in that with with two of her speeches. And I have somehow 
garnered the responsibility of doing the tournament coordinating <laughs> for that tournament. So that's a volunteer opportunity. Jim is going to be in charge of facilities. So we have, it's kind of all hands on deck, all Murray family yeah. involved. So that's going to be next week. And we're really looking forward to it. I keep telling people that I am nervously excited about it. Yeah. So eventually are they going to call it like the Murray tournament? Like in honor of the Murray family that's serving in this capacity? I don't believe so because no. we are a tiny family compared to many that participate. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, excellent. That's very cool. Great opportunity for Lily and in, in her pursuit of that. So, so Joshua, our executive minister, is also here with us. Joshua, start off. I guess we were talking about animals today. That's where we're going. Any animals in the Persall household? We don't have any domesticated animals, but if we enjoy looking in our backyard and watching the rabbits and our pet groundhog, we have a pet groundhog in the backyard, maybe two. We're not for sure if it's the same one or if there may be like a son or daughter of the groundhog potentially. Okay. N yeah. Have you guys named the groundhogs? Yes. I cannot remember the name at this point because it just hit me. I'm like, what was the name the children gave the groundhog? Yeah. I thought for a moment there you were going to go with the children being non-domesticated animals, <laughs> yes. some of the boys there. but Okay, so what's going on in your neck of the world? Well, my wife is involved with some other ladies in planning the women's the ladies' retreat coming up May, mm -hmm. I think, 9th through 11th. So that is kind of the big thing going on. So we get to help out with getting some things ready. It's all hands on deck sometimes with that. And you know, there's some surprises coming that we can't talk about. So that's, that's really, Ooh. really exciting. So. Or we'll just have the, the ladies turn off this podcast and tell everybody else about that. Do we get a preview of it? No. Okay. No, we, we, can't, we can't take any chances on it. All, right, all right. There's a lady here. <laughs> okay. So does your, I mean, for Jonathan and Allison, they ramp up a lot in the summer. What's your schedule like as far as executive minister schedule? Are you busier, less busy over the summer? What does that look like as far as the flow of of things? Yeah, I was just I was just thinking through that, and I was like, boy, my schedule sounds so normal compared to theirs. I don't have all those big events coming up, but it it's kind of the nature of what I do is that I get an opportunity to really come alongside of a lot of different ministries and in helping everything fit together. So. So summer is not a super busy time for me. We had the membership class recently, mm -hmm. and that went really well. We do have, you know, we do have a worship minister search coming up, so I get to be involved with that, mm -hmm. and so that that will be going on. But it's it's really a time that I get to participate in a lot of these things, but I don't specifically lead a lot of the the summer activities. But definitely want to resource them, make sure that the facilities are ready, the vans ready, all those kind of things, so that we have all the resources in place for those to be successful. Mm -hmm. Do you have your assignment yet from Allison for VBS? I think we've talked about it in okay. we've talked about it okay. in concept and being along having a crew and mm -hmm. we've done that before and it's usually yeah. a lot of fun. Cuz I know you say you're not as busy but you're still participating in these things. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So it's, it definitely ramps up schedule and absolutely and things absolutely. like that. So I think it's interesting that you said your your schedule seems boring compared to these <laughs> two and I think that was something I realized coming out of youth ministry is like, man, I'm behind a computer a lot more than I ever <laughs> thought I would be, you know, just doing the details of things, but also just getting after work and all of that. And it's not, it's not as back and forth as it used mm. to be for me, but uh, one of the things that I miss. So, well, Garrett, come over to you. Garrett is our minister of outreach and small groups. Garrett, what is your world like right now? What's, what's going on in your life? Like in... Home or in ministry, which we'll start off with home. I guess what we we've been talking about pets, so we'll go there. What what pets are at home? How's your dog? She's good. She's wearing a diaper right now. I don't know if I should say that or not. Fantastic. Yeah, she's uh, we. I don't know if I should, how much detail I can get into this. <laughs> I want to know. She there's we, a lot of questions. We never got her spayed. <laughs> We're just gonna keep going. We never got her spayed, so yeah. now she's in heat. So. If you come over to our house, you'll see a dog running around in a diaper. It's a funny sight to see. But Has she had puppies before? She has. Okay. So really? we got her from a, a program in Kentucky that you get a purebred golden for free, but they get the rights to breed the, the golden. <laughs> and so she, she, she's been bred once, but then we bought her for a reduced price after we moved. 
but we can't afford to get her spades. <laughs> so she's just going to wait expensive. on that. So if anybody would like to sponsor this podcast, <laughs> all proceeds go to sponsor that. Okay. So is that it? You, you have a dog? Yep. And she's a good dog. Well trained. We trained her with blueberries and hot dogs mm. before we had a child. I don't know. She would be a wild dog if we'd. I feel like you're training your child with blueberries and hot dogs too. <laughs> he eats a lot. He does. He's, yeah. So he he just had his second birthday. So mm-hmm. also thank you all for coming to his mm-hmm. birthday party. He loved it. Jonathan wasn't there. No, I yeah. was not. You weren't. Wish I could have been. Yeah. You were missed. Thank you. Um, I'm feeling a lot more positivity from this side <laughs> of the couch than from over here. <laughs> but he's, it, it's crazy to see how like quickly things are changing. He loves... I don't know if it's like a toddler thing, but he loves watching videos of himself. <laughs> and so like you keep going back in your camera roll and you see just like two months ago how different he looks from how he mm. looks now and how much he's growing. So that's, that's really cool to see that and just kind of gauge those milestones, how much he's picking up on language. So my in-laws are in right now. They usually come in once a year. Isabel's from Brazil and they still live in Brazil. And so they'll come in for about a month or so. They've, they'll be here for total of 40 days and so there's two languages going on in our household right now portuguese (laughs) and english and it's cool to see him pick up on it and he's like translating it in his head somehow and like someone will say something in portuguese and he'll answer the portuguese statement in english so (laughs) he's not answering in portuguese but he's answering in english so it's just cool seeing that sort of development happen in live time kids are smart yeah Yeah. So it's very cool. It's one of those things you don't think about before you have kids, but then as yeah. you after you have kids and you see that development, how cool that is. What about the season for you as far as your role here at NCC outreach small groups? Small groups are probably winding down yeah. a bit, but what about the outreach portion of things? Well, small groups are winding down as far as the groups meeting, but summer is when it'll probably wind up a little bit for me on the behind the scenes mm. and getting stuff prepped for the fall and, mm-hmm. and spring. We're going to try to add a lot of new groups. We had a, a, a huge amount of people involved in small groups this year, both in the fall and the spring. And so I want to be able to add some new groups to have just more available. So a lot of legwork will be done in the summer for that. Mm-hmm. And we'll still have a couple other things available in the summer as well. But then on the outreach side of things, we're, we're, adding a lot of new partnerships and hopefully some new programs. So one of the partnerships we're looking to implement, which will hopefully start in June is partnering with the health clinic that comes out of the reclamation center in Monroeville that Tom Mitlow, who was the founder of the blessing board in case you didn't put that together. He is in charge of the reclamation center, which is associated with reclamation church and they're starting a health clinic, a free healthcare clinic mm. for for people that need it. Yeah. And what they're trying to do is get churches to volunteer. It'll be open, I think it's Tuesdays and Saturdays. So it's not every day that it's open, but he's trying to get churches to volunteer for one Tuesday or one Saturday a month and staff the health clinic. And so hopefully we'll get that up and running. And then we're also, we have a couple other programs that we're trying to work and and add into some of the other things that we have going on with like mobile food pantry and stuff like that. So outreach is one of those things that just always kind of keeps motoring along behind the scenes. And then the small group ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know with what you do with small, with outreach, I mean, you're meeting with a lot of people, a lot of people, members of NCC that are passionate about something specific. Maybe they've already started something. Maybe they've seen something somewhere else and you're trying to, maybe coach them along. You're trying to show them the resources that NCC has and really trying to foster that passion within them for them to own this ministry or outreach or whatever becomes of it. And so I think you've been doing a great job looking at the needs that the Norwin area has or the area outside of Norwin and how we can, as a church, be a greater resource, a greater refuge, a greater help in those areas. Yeah, trying to be a point person for everything we already have going on, but also attentive to new areas to invest into and reach into and plugging the right people into it. 
it's not possible and it's not possible to do everything. So it's sure. more of just like yep. being the guy that everything runs to for help, I guess, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Not to t- steal your DJ or whatever you're My doing. Hosting. You're hosting. DJ. <laughs> what's going you're, you're, on? I wish I could be a DJ. That'd yeah. be fun. Well, look, what MC? Uh, MC. Word, I was like, different first, letters. Different okay. letters. Yeah. MC and. MCJ. What sermon series do we have coming up anytime soon? So we are we're talking about love this month. We had some missionaries in after missions weekend during missions weekend to talk about that and started talking about loving different kind of people groups and populations. I mean, it's it can often be easy to love the people that are easy to love, but scripture talks a lot about loving people that aren't like us. And sometimes that takes it takes work and it takes getting out of our comfort zone and just learning these things and being reminded. So that's what we're talking about on Sundays is, is, is reminding people of this love. And so the scary thing for me, though, is I, beyond that sermon series, I'm not quite sure yet. How do uh, you navigate like planning ahead of time and stuff? Yeah, so that's a good question. So really trying to be open to the Spirit. We're reading a, a book as a staff and one of one of the points in, in one of the chapters was really about listening in prayer. And he made a good point about how absurd it would be if your relationship with, with another person is solely based on you talking. Like, hey, we had a great conversation. I talked for an hour straight. But that's like the pinnacle of prayer, right? If if we said, oh, I prayed for an hour straight, be like, wow, that person's really spiritual. But if all it is is me talking to God, I'm not willing to listen. Hmm. And so that's really a lot of it. You know, I can listen in my car. I can listen uh, as I'm reading a book and I reflect on things and I go, oh, is this God speaking to me through this about what our church needs to hear? Mm. And so I have a short list of things, of, of of scripture topics, of different things that we haven't talked about in a while, or hey, I've been having this feeling and maybe a few people have brought this up, this topic or a book of the Bible. And even like, so I preached a few weeks ago on the paradox of the last being made first. And one of the scriptures I used came from 1 Corinthians. And so I was reading the context of that verse that I used in 1 Corinthians and came across this. There's an argument in the the church in Corinth about kind of who you're getting your teaching from. They are arguing over who baptized these people. And Paul thought it was all ridiculousness. And so he's like, man, I'm glad I didn't baptize any of you because then you'd be like, well, I was baptized by Paul. I'm greater than you. And it just, you know we create arguments over anything. And so this is Paul just calling them out. And he says, I'm glad I didn't baptize anybody. First Corinthians 1 17 says, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. That was the main part of his, his ministry was to preach the gospel at such a vital time of the early church. But then he says this, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. And so just to me, again, even listening listening to the Spirit. So as I'm preparing a different sermon, I'm reading this verse and going, oh man, okay, as, as I'm thinking of this sermon series coming up or after the summer when we get to the fall, I don't need to be thinking, you know, what's this great strategy? How can I word it perfectly? How can I be the one to bring this gospel to these people that have never heard it like this before and be the one that's that's revealing this great truth in their life. And so in that moment I'm 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 reading the scripture going, we just got to stick to the basics and 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 okay, do we need a sermon series on why do we believe what we believe in in the church? Why do we do things? Why do we have baptisms like we do? Why do we take communion the way we do? Kind of so that's that'll roll around in my head and then I'll have some quiet time with the Lord or I'll I'll get some books based on that and go, oh yeah, maybe this is this is how we can form it. This would fit really well in the fall. And so it's not not a one time decision to say, okay, this is this is gonna be it. I read this verse. This is gonna be our theme for the fall. But really, I think a long process mm-hmm. that comes. And so there's a some things rolling around and on a short list and just being open to to what's coming next. You didn't ask me about how many pets I have at home though. I know. Well I was trying to think of a way, how do I segue the serious topic of planning out spiritually being driven yeah. mm. into my sermons to, yeah. hey, what pets do you have? <laughs> I do I do go on walks a lot with my dog, and I think those are like 
good spiritual quiet walks. times. Yeah. So what mm. in your spiritual, spiritual walks? Oh. What pets are you walking? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Do you li- do you listen to your your dog talk to you? Give yeah. you guidance? <laughs> oh boy. You talked about listening, right? Like Bale, um, Bale yeah. and his dog. Balaam yeah. and his dog. Can you, can you My translate? dog has never talked to me, no. <laughs> we, were, we were talking about multiple languages in Garrett's house. Do you know dog language? No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> bark, bark. I do have a dog. Uh, her name is Lulu. She's a wonderful dog. And then we also have a leopard gecko. My son has a leopard gecko. What is a leopard gecko? A gecko that looks like a leopard? or No, it's got spots, so that's why they call it a leopard gecko. Oh. It's it's pretty big. I mean, it's bigger than your hand, longer than your hand anyways. Does he just let it like crawl all over him? Yeah, it's like super chill. Wow. It's it's really cool. It sheds its skin every once in a while. And it like <laughs> I thought, like because I'm not big into reptiles, but it definitely has a personality. Like you go in there and turn on the light, and its head kind of pops up, and she looks around, and her name's Urbosa, and that name comes from... Video game Breath of the Wild, yeah. Legend of Zelda, <laughs> and my son could tell you a whole lot more about it than I can. But. Sounds Latin. That's another one of those <laughs> pets that when we've watched your like house while you're gone, I'll I'll be taking care of Lulu and Natalie's job is the get go, and I'll come up and she's like got it on her shoulder and yeah. she's petting it. She's like, "Do you want to hold him?" Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my dog got left out because Jeff phrased the question to me if I had new pets so in true. my house. <laughs> oh, you didn't get a chance to brag on I your dog. Have, I didn't. So, so we have Sadie and she just turned three years old and she's really yeah. sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Has she slowed down any? She has. She's still like when people come to our house, she thinks they are there mm-hmm. to play with her. <laughs> and I don't know that that will ever change. But she is more chill now than when she was a puppy, for sure. We've noticed that with Coda because she's now like three and a half. And there was like a shift after she had puppies where she still gets excited, but she lays down a lot. <laughs> and like you'll take her for a walk and then she's done. <laughs> Of the day. Now, if you were to ask Jim that question, he would say, no, she's still every bit as crazy as she was because when he comes home from work, she wants nothing more than to play yeah. with him the whole night. But she doesn't play the same way with me. She likes to nap with me instead. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to end on a question since we've been talking about dogs a lot. This question is for Joshua. Joshua, do all dogs go to heaven? Mm. Wow. You know, I, I no, still- yes or no? <laughs> yes or yes or no? There's no winning. In this. <laughs> how, how how did I get? Th- well, you know, actually, there is an easy answer. No, <gasps> because then oh, we don't have to even. A, we don't even have to address Joshua. At, no, the afterlife of pets. Pets. Do, I saw an do article. Pets have souls. I saw an article on that from Renew.org recently. Go. Good resource. <laughs> So I, I thought, I know my wife had had some conversations with some of her friends about it. I thought, well, it just kind of hit me. I was like, hmm, I wonder if that's kind of speaks into that situation. It, were they just writing the article with the catchy title just to focus on what encapsulate and and sold person or being? No, Daniel McCoy, I think, was the one who wrote it. And he really went into some depth of of the topics that you're mentioning. And I, I can't probably converse about it super intelligently, mm-hmm. but they did kind of dig into it and and answer not answer the question probably directly as we're looking for it but really analyze the different parts of the question mm-hmm. and the significance it has you know to the different parts of it yeah. if i can be very vague <laughs> hey, i just i thought of something that i totally forgot to mention and my family's going to be super disappointed so they're doing this thing right now called the spring 100 and all of my children are really excited about it so trying to walk or run intentionally a hundred miles in the spring. And so that's, wow, re- that's just really, in the spring. I just totally just skipped my mind, but that's all the rave at my house right now. Very it's like cool. how, how they can get outside and get their miles. How many in. miles have they got in? Uh, there's a chart up in the, in the schoolroom and I can't, I can't tell you for sure, but there, it's definitely, it's definitely tacking on, you know, are they like piling up? keeping track of yeah. using the lead yeah, with the most miles? Yeah. It's kind of like stacking up. That's you see funny. the different colors. It's a bar graph. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Salome's got that all laid out pretty nice. <laughs> Excellent. Sorry, sorry, I dodged the question and made it very vague. No, yeah. that's okay. You I thought that would be a quick end, on. didn't you? What's that? You said you thought that would be like a quick end. and then I, I, I was just excited in my head that I thought about this gotcha, gotcha. quick to end well, us. Well, now I want to read that article and talk more about what encapsulates maybe the that, day. Maybe that's a, a future podcast. Uh, future podcast yeah, episode yeah. right there. I want to thank you again for listening to NCC Unplugged and joining us for this staff roundtable. Really appreciate your comments. You listening, anytime you can rate us on whatever you're listening to us right now, uh, goes a long way. So thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in to NC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, 
we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 